Welcome to Unsuitable on Ray Radio, the award-winning financial services and business advisory podcast that challenges your old school business practices and the traditional business suit culture. Our guests are industry professionals and experts who will challenge you to think beyond the suit and tie while offering you meaningful modern solutions to help you enhance your company's growth. I'm your host, Dave Kane. A very special guest with us today. Our guest is Doug Hauser, who recently joined Ray and Associates as our new director of construction and real estate services. Many of you may have met Doug as he's traveling throughout the state of Ohio, meeting with referral sources and clients, and talking about construction, consulting, services, and real estate opportunities. Welcome back to Unsuitable, Doug. Good to be here again, Dave. Good. Uh, kind of refresh. How long have you been with uh, the firm? Close to six months now. Six months. Yeah, time and flies. And you are a partner with the firm, I so am. you are uh, well uh, entrenched in the leadership position with Ray and Associates. I've really enjoyed uh, getting to know everybody from the team a lot more and integrating uh, myself with, with clients and trying to help out where I can and uh, build relationships. It's you a know, lot of fun. The, the director of construction and real estate services, that is a really uh, unique industry and growing industry, and we're glad to have you aboard. Absolutely. Good so uh, what? Uh, talk to me as you're traveling around the state of Ohio. What are you uh, encountering within the industry? Well, it's interesting. Um, you know, throughout our, our footprint, of course, uh, we, we do see differences, surprisingly, between, uh, say, northeast Ohio, um, west central Ohio, central Ohio, and, and southeast Ohio. And, and I saw this uh, occur 20 years ago when I uh, got started dealing with construction and real estate related entities. Uh, there are quite a lot of regional differences even with the st within the state. So it is surprising uh, what you run into uh, from that perspective. But there's, you know, the, the times are very good, certainly for construction related entities right now. Uh, there are certain sectors that have more concern than others uh, about where we're headed into 19 and beyond. Some feel very positive that they're still going to be very strong throughout 19. Uh, some even beyond that, they've already got backlog. Uh, certain sectors in the in the real estate segment certainly are, are looking very strong into 19 and beyond. Others, maybe not so much. So, um, you know, we just try to be cautious and make sure our clients understand the risks and, and where they can be aggressive and, and where they maybe need to take a take a breath, take a pause, and uh, you know, we want to help them get there. What's interesting about your bio and resume is that, uh, of course, you're a CPA. Mm -hmm. It started, uh, if I recall, with a big four. Might have been Big Eight It was Big Eight back then. It was a Big Eight. Yeah. Okay. How about that? Yeah. Uh, big Eight, Big Four, 20-plus uh, years in the banking industry, right. uh, in private uh, industry, and now uh, with CPA firm specializing in an area that you have great passion for. I do. Um, it, it's funny because when I started out of school in public accounting many moons ago, uh, late 80s, I, I was the uh, kind of the dumb one that raised my hand when they said, hey, who wants to do uh, do construction? And I said, hey, that sounds fun. I didn't, I didn't know any better. And, and I was kind of the uh, the guy from the, the wrong side of the tracks a little bit. So uh, I thought it sounded great. And uh, Got into it, enjoyed it, and here I am, I don't know, 29 years later. 29, still, uh, still, still going. Still churning. Yeah. Still playing. So I did that in a number of different ways, uh, through public accounting, as you said, and, and banking and financing, and uh, then in the private sector, and, and now uh, back in, in public accounting and looking forward to helping clients out. You know, what are, uh, what are some of the needs you're seeing out there with the contractors, uh, you know, what are some uh, areas of concern? I think, you know, one of the things that, that we try to focus on is make sure that the relationship with the other advisors is strong. Uh, particularly in construction, there can often be a great reliance on, on bonding and surety requirements. Uh, they underwrite that entity uh, as well. They underwrite specific projects. So we need to make sure we're providing them the tools so that they can get that, that bond and go ahead and perform on that project. Um, so we have to have a great understanding of the information that needs to be present so that they can make the best decisions. And it's funny, still to this day, how many financial statements I pick up. They don't have either a, a proper jobs in progress schedule or one that's sloppy and not tied out to the balance sheet or 
the other detailed information just just isn't there in terms of what uh, would be valuable and what they'd like to see. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of different things that, that go into it, but providing good quality information that allows the management team to make its best decisions on a real-time basis, as well as the other, other advisors, uh, that, that's what we need to do. You know, as a uh, consultant to the industry, um, you know, you mentioned the schedules, the, the job costing, all of that. Uh, and again, as it's being reported to a third parties, you know, you're seeing some problems in that area. Can you, can you help me if I'm a contractor in that business? Can you help my accounting department get that straightened around? Absolutely. You know, uh, we've got a great resource internally here with our accounting services area. We've got folks that, in, in my view, having been uh, around the state and, and seeing a lot of different companies and a lot of different firms and entities, our accounting services folks have a better knowledge of dealing with construction companies and construction related businesses in terms of taking care of that day-to-day -day stuff for clients better than anybody that I've seen out there and and I mean that sincerely I mean, we've got just some talented folks internally that can really take a lot of that burden off of the hands of the client because after all their expertise isn't the accounting you know it should be going out and performing on the project so to the extent they can think about outsourcing that, making it a lot more efficient, whether we're a part of that solution or the entire solution, uh, I mean, I just think that makes tremendous sense. You know, I think, uh, and you hit on this earlier, I think that quality of information is, at, is maybe at a premium in, in the industry now than it's ever been. Yes. Would you agree? I would agree, absolutely. And if uh, that quality is not there, what are the consequences? You mentioned bonding. You mentioned... Right. Uh, some taxation issues that may fall through the trap. Well, what are some other consequences? Yeah, certainly I mean, you talk about taxation, uh, establishing nexus in different communities that we see now because contractors are among the easiest targets. A lot of them, you'll see equipment or trucks performing uh, in jobs in remote locations. All of a sudden, a, a county official or a state official in some other locale sees that, you know, jots that name down, and all of a sudden you're getting notices, hey, what are you guys doing in, in this neck of the woods, and we've got potential tax liability. So just, you know, being aware of those things, making sure that you've got a partner uh, like Ray that can help you navigate the, those, those waters, which can be difficult. Uh, beyond that stuff, you know, we really see a lot of exposure in, in cyber risk, uh, believe it or not, with, with contractors because they, get, they tend to get very uh, trustworthy and in deep with other relationships with either subcontractors, joint ventures, other things like that. So there's a lot of potential cyber risk. Separation of duties doesn't always happen very easily uh, with construction companies, we find. So you, you have a lot of potential for, for areas that, uh, that can go sideways on you quickly. Great. You mentioned uh, Nexus, and uh, we better not uh, let our state and local tax team <laughs> find out that we're talking about Nexus and taxation within various uh, cities and everything. That has become an extremely difficult process for uh, contractors are one that's, that's big. Absolutely. They're, they're a prime target, and we, we rely heavily on, on our, uh, our SALT team here, which they're, they're just wonderful, wonderful resources, as good as any that I've seen. In fact, a couple of other firms that I was close to while I was in banking, you know, I've started to uh, maintain those relationships even now that I'm with, quote unquote, a, a, a rival firm. And we've got consulting arrangements with, with other firms now because our SALT team is so strong. They realize for their construction clients, they can't fulfill that, that expertise and, and that those capabilities. So we're now doing that for them. So I think you know, that just points to the, the level of expertise we've got here. Does the industry have a target on its back as far as this nexus in state and local taxation? Uh, absolutely, I would, I would agree. Uh, certainly because they're performing so well, the money is very good right now, that's one. Two, they're very visible. Again, you see, you see cranes, you see equipment, you see trucks, you see vehicles with, with names plastered on them. So it's very easy to identify that they're there physically and it's the low-hanging fruit. As we look into 2019, what do you see? Interesting. Get your, get your crystal ball out. Yeah, Let's it, go. Interestingly, I think 
from the folks I've talked to, uh, particularly in, on the real estate side, there is a great concern that we have hit a peak with regard to multifamily housing. Uh, not that there's not a need for additional multifamily housing, but this, the scope and the financial return on the projects has hit a peak. In fact, I had one expert tell me uh, about a month ago, a veteran individual has been in the real estate business over 30 years. He said, Doug, this is 2008 all over again. And he, he didn't mean in terms of global financial crisis or the, you know, the whole system melting down. He was particularly talking just about real estate. He said, it's overheated, it's overvalued. He said, we will not fund any more multifamily projects in the region. He said, I just think the return is ridiculous right now. They can't sustain these level of rents throughout the life of the project. Yes, it may look good for a couple of years, but through the life of the project, they can't maintain these, this level of rents to sustain the, the viability of it. So again, that's just one person's opinion, but I've heard that from, from several. So we'll, we'll see. I, I do feel like there is a peak in, in that area. By the same token, there's a lot of areas still that, that have great potential. A lot of areas of redevelopment. There's still a, a great need for additional commercial real estate investment in, in certain markets. And with regard to construction, I would tell you that if you're in a, a specialized trade or a specialized niche that requires a significant barrier to entry to enter that segment, profits look real good, margins look real good, activity should be real good, certainly through next year. Good. You know, we had talked about in a previous podcast about finding the right bank mm -hmm. for a contractor. Not all banks are into right. construction, uh, contractors in real estate. Talk to me a little bit about that, finding the right bank. Well, it, again, it comes back to the understanding of the industry. So we see things like, you know, banks will put in a, a standard lending relationship. Hey, you've got to provide this borrowing base certificate without understanding, for example, that retainage might be lumped in with receivables, as, as it really should be. Uh, however, the retainage is a different type of receivable. The bank may not understand that. All of a sudden, somebody looks at it and says, oh, well, we're not going to count this. I've also seen arrangements where they'll back out costs in excess of billings and do other things like that because, again, they don't understand the, uh, the industry or the business. So it's just making sure that they understand the financial information that they, they are reading, they being the, the bank or the other third party, because for a construction company, those financial statements look very, very different than they do for a manufacturer or a distributor. I'm going to ask you an obvious question, maybe. Okay. Is the industry making money? Industry's making a ton of money right now. And if you're not, then it's it's probably time to reevaluate your overall business acumen because frankly, most in the industry are quote unquote printing money right now. And if you're not it's again, good to hear. you got a problem. It's good to hear. Yep. Keep it coming. And in, in it compared to uh, years ago when when we're chasing contracts and gross revenue and and the margins just weren't there. Right. So I'm glad to hear the uh, the bit of a turnaround. The the challenge is, and you hear this often, it's it's finding people. Talent. Um, so the, the the good ones, they'll take on the right projects at, at premium margins and not just say yes to everything. Uh, you've got to know what clients, in essence, to, to work with and what clients not to. It's no different than any business, but the good ones are able to make that decision. You know, we talked a little bit about tax planning. I know we're, we're touching many different areas, but, uh, you know, there's some great tax planning ideas there are. available. We talked to them on a number of podcasts, but uh, can you share a few of those with us? I know you're not a tax guy, and you're not a state and local tax right. guy, but you're talking about that stuff, yeah. so go for it. Absolutely. Buddy. You know, I, I think the biggest thing is to sit down and really develop a long-term plan. What, what I see more than anything particularly with construction companies, these folks are so immersed in their business, they really have no ability to think, how do I get out? And construction companies traditionally are not very saleable because of the, the nature of the business, the people involved. So I would say if I would touch on one area with regard to tax, it, it, 
it has to do with estate planning and exit planning and succession planning. That That's really, to me, the, the key area that you should sit down and think about. And there's a number of different strategies to pursue, whether it's a, a mini leveraged recap, management buyout, perhaps an ESOP, other strategies like that that can help uh, alleviate the, the tax burden down the road. So there's no time but the present when uh, life is really good Absolutely. to look at succession planning. For sure. And, and it's something that we are dealing with and we hear every day because so many companies just struggle, particularly in construction, to get through the crisis and survive. They have an amazing ability to survive. Well, now that times are good, they're so busy just trying to get the work done, they haven't given the forethought to, what's my, what's my plan two, three, four, five years down the road? So we're trying to help people deal with that now because you do need to plan. you got to get evaluation. You've got to sit down and think about all your constituents internally to your company, your family, yeah, your community, all those things, and how do you feel about those uh, all those different groups, and, and how do you want to maintain your, your legacy going forward? You know, do you help our, our contractor clients? Do you try to hook them up with their, their bonding uh, group, their, their surety company? Absolutely. In fact, uh, we're, we're having, uh, we're going to do a, a joint presentation uh, after the first of the year with, with a major surety provider here in, in Ohio. I think, again, the fact that we take the time to sit down with those surety agents and those underwriters to understand what their needs are with regard to our clients. Helps our clients be more well-rounded and understand that, hey, we're all there as a part of the team to help them do better. And don't treat this like it's a separate silo. What's your expense report look like at the end of the month? What's your mileage? You're a lot of over, mileage. A lot of mileage. A lot of mileage. Yeah, those boots are getting old, man. You're yeah. uh, you're moving all around the state. It's all good. I so, enjoy it. So uh, if I want to, if I'm a contractor, I want to talk to you. How do I get a hold of you? You can reach me on you're my moving. cell. Cell is always the best, which is uh, 614-314-5937. Uh, email also. Doug.Hauser at RayCPA.com. You know, you're the first one on this podcast of about 170 episodes that ever has given their cell phone number. It's there. So uh, no secret. Give it to us one more time. Slow. 614-314-5937. You got it. So that's great. Um, you know, as we, uh, as we wind down the podcast, uh, can you give us... Uh, I'm a contractor. What three things? What's my action plan for yeah, 2019? What are my New Year's resolution? Give me three things. First and foremost, I would say let's make sure the quality of your financial information is what you need and what your other advisors need. So let's, let's make sure there's a good matching of the information that, that is put together. Secondly, I would say let's sit down and develop a three to five year plan, whatever that looks like. Uh, whether you still intend to be in the business and you want to grow it, or you're in more of a maintenance mode and it's a lifestyle business, let's talk about those goals so we can help you achieve them. And thirdly, around that, then I'd say let's sit down and develop a strategy with regard to tax and other consultative services that help you get to that plan. That's, that's really the key. So the number one is quality of information, mm -hmm. data. You'd also mentioned uh, earlier on uh, security issues, mm -hmm. you know, data breaches. Are you running across any of that? I would say it, more, than actual, more than an actual breach, we really see with construction and real estate a lack of separation of duties and, and fraud that occurs that way. Uh, trusted employees that you think, wow, they've been here for 20 years, but procedures just aren't followed, and there's a life event that causes some challenge. And it's a red flag, isn't it? Before you know it, money's gone. You know, that was a red flag 50 years ago, and it's still a red flag. Absolutely. Can you help me fix it? Yeah, there, there's certainly there, there's technology uh, available that can, can help with that. The other thing I would say is I would suggest 
examining and outsourcing of a portion of your accounting services, whether in entirety or, again, just a piece where perhaps we're taking a look at uh, that information on a monthly basis and making sure that all the proper uh, reconciliations are done and, and you can feel good about what you're doing. Kind of an internal control uh, checklist. Absolutely. Let's go back and get that done. Protect our assets. Right. So, Our guest today has been Doug Hauser with Ray & Associates, Director of Construction and Real Estate Services. Thanks again for joining us, Doug. Great stuff. Great to be here. Appreciate it. Listeners, if you enjoyed today's episode, let us know, like it, comment on it, or share it. And don't forget to check out videos of our podcast on YouTube. If you want to learn more about this topic or talk one-on-one with Doug Hauser, email us at contact.us, which is also us, at raycpa.com. Until next time, I'm Dave Kane. Encourage you to loosen up your tie and think outside the box. Woo! Oh, a lot.